With Scott Pelley, who is here as he has penned a book, Truth Worth Telling, and it is a fascinating book about journalism, his career, about life, about so many different things. And I've gotten a lot out of it, what I've read so far. But I have to ask you, first of all, why decide to write a book? You're engaged in telling stories on television every day. You went for a book. Well, you know, Alan, so many people were asking me, you know, when are you going to write a book? When are you going to write? Well, this is my first book. I didn't even know I could. I wanted to write a memoir, but I didn't want to write a memoir about me because I didn't think anybody would care about that. But it did occur to me that I'd met the most fascinating people in the world over the years, and that's what that book's about. Well, that's the kind of reporter you are, and the best reporters are are people who tell stories about others and not about themselves. And, and there's a lot of wisdom in there that you glean from other people through the years. Um, one story in particular which sticks out is revisiting the family of a young man who died in Afghanistan several years later. That had to be really difficult for you to do. Tell me about that. This is a young Marine named uh, David Hall who um, operated the minesweeper at the head of his patrol in Afghanistan. And I was so, uh, David was killed while 60 Minutes was on his base in Afghanistan, and I was never able to get him out of my mind. And many years later, I went to visit his family in Lorain, Ohio, uh, to understand this young man even more. And one of the things they told me, this was a really big guy, he was a big, tall, handsome man. And one of the things they told me was that when he was in middle school, he'd been bullied so much that they had to move him to a different school. And that told me a lot because here's David Hall as a grown man protecting, right, all of the other Marines going out at the head of the patrol, protecting everyone else. And it informed so much about um, about this great young man and, and what he what he meant, what his life meant, what he intended to do. He was killed by an IED, but as we say in the book, he suffered that alone. None of the other Marines was killed, and that is what he always intended. And then you visited with his father, and you, and you, and you talked with his family, and all those years later, what did you learn? from them and they they took in another young man right you know uh, when i went to visit the halls in lorraine i was surprised to see another young man with him an african-american man named phineas and uh it turned out that he was a member of Hall's platoon, and Hall had told his parents, if anything ever happens to me, take care of Phineas. And that's exactly what they were doing. He was living with them, almost like their son, in the house while he went to college nearby. <laughs> and uh, that kind of gallantry, I think, is one of the things that I want to make the most of in this book to tell the stories of heroes. I think we can use a hero right about now. Absolutely. And, and I will tell people constantly one of the greatest things about reporting is, is the stories of decency that you get to witness. I mean, you've witnessed so many more at, you know, than I have at, at a level that I haven't been at. But you were, you were at Ground Zero. You, you know, talk with the firefighters. And life is a series of stories, isn't it, in that way? It is for everyone. It's yeah. just that people like you and I, Alan, get to tell everybody about our experiences. The first chapter in the book is called Gallantry, and it's about the members of the fire department of the city of New York. I was at the World Trade Center when the buildings came down, and I watched those firefighters go up into those towers, knowing what the risk was, just against the chance that they might be able to save someone. 343 firefighters died that day. And I wanted to pay tribute to them. That, those are some of the values that, that are in the book. The chapter titles are things like selflessness, valor, devotion. Devotion is the chapter about David Hall we were just talking about. And I wanted people to meet these extraordinary Americans who had found the meaning of their lives during the historic moments of our times. Mm -hmm. Are you worried about journalism right now? I'm worried about America right now. Um, what's the fastest way to destroy a democracy? Is it terrorism, war, Great Depression? I don't think so. I think the fastest way to destroy a democracy is to poison the information. And we have just gone seamlessly from the information age to the disinformation age. We have to have, as American citizens, solid, reliable information to make decisions about our country. 
And I'm afraid that Russia, North Korea, other foreign actors, cynical politicians are poisoning our information. And so people say, well, what am I supposed to do about that? I say, go to, go to Channel 4. Go to CBS, go to the Chicago Tribune, wherever you want to go, but look for brand name journalism and compare what you're reading on the internet with what other people are reporting. The beauty of it, Alan, as you know better than I, is that for the first time in history, that's possible. People can, in a couple of minutes, check two or three news sources. Uh, there is no democracy without journalism. That's mm -hmm. what I tell young people. It is just that important. And it used to be that we had this common set of facts that arrived on our doorstep, that newspaper yes. that arrived every day, much of it AP and UPI reporting. But now there's so many different sources and so many different branches. I wonder how do we solve that problem because people don't take a newspaper every day as much as they used to. Well, it's a very self-serving for me to say, but I, I do direct people to brand name journalism for this this reason. At least at Channel 4 or at the Denver newspaper, you know mm -hmm. that there are people trained in journalism who are trying to get it right, to make it fair, make it honest. You know that they're supervised by people who have been doing this for 10, 20, 30 years. And more importantly than all of that, places like Channel 4 have enormous reputational risk if they get something wrong. So you know from those brand name journalism sources that they're desperately trying to get it right and you've never had more access to those as a reader or a viewer than you do today. And I have to ask you about working on 60 Minutes, me being a fan all my life. Me too. And, <laughs> Since I was the, a kid. Is it the best job in the world? Yes, it is the best job in the world. Yes, yeah. it is. We are, uh -huh. uh, we are tasked uh, by Bill Owens, the executive producer, to search the world for the most fascinating people and places. And and, uh, and bring them home to the American viewer. And that is an amazing job. Next season is our 52nd season. It's the most successful primetime television show of any kind in history. Well, thank goodness for that. <laughs> and, and I know there's so many wonderful stories within these. I, I don't, should I ask you what your favorite is out of these? Can I do that? Does that exist? Well, I love all my children, but yes. I, I, have, I have two favorites. First, chapter one, Gallantry, which yep. is about the FDNY. I witnessed those events and I just all my life have wanted to pay tribute to those incredible men and women who gave their lives. The second favorite is the last chapter. It's called To a Young Journalist mm -hmm. and it's about our values. It's about the values that you have. It's about what we do as journalists and how we do it and how to do it right. And we need another great generation of journalists in order to preserve our democracy. Oh, we certainly do. And thanks for encouraging that and writing the book. Thank because you. Because it's terrific truth worth telling. Scott Pelley, appreciate it very much. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Absolute pleasure.